For some insight into this new space mission, I spoke to Leroy Chow. He's a former NASA astronaut. This actually really is a mission of first, so this is going to be the first time anyone or any entity has landed a probe on the far side of the moon. And that's significant for a couple of different reasons. We know that the, the composition is different back on the far side. Uh, the craters seem to be smaller. And uh, this probe, if it lands successfully, will actually do use ground penetrating radar to kind of map the structure underneath the surface to better understand the structure of the moon. And it's also going to be doing a few other things. It's going to be doing some radio astronomy which is unique because what it means is on the far side of the moon, it blocks out all the transmissions coming from the Earth from all our broadcasting. And so it allows the uh, spacecraft to use an antenna to listen at very low frequencies to things that it wouldn't normally be able to hear uh, if it weren't in the Earth or in the moon's shadow. One other thing that's very interesting is that back in May, China launched a relay satellite. And so it's in what's called a halo orbit around the moon. So it has a constant uh, view line of sight with the Earth so it can relay the radio signals back and forth between the control center and, and the, uh, the, the uh, rover and lander on the ground there on the moon. And I understand next year China hopes to collect samples mm -hmm. from the far side of the moon. Yes. Um, what more can we learn and, and why haven't we seen anything done like this before? Well, let's see. So China's only the third nation to send a probe to the moon behind the United States and uh, the former Soviet Union. Uh, Russia did bring some samples back with their robotic lander and of course the American astronauts brought back rock samples. But this will be the first sample return from the far side and so it'll be interesting to compare to see if the, you know there are any differences between the rocks that are collected on that side, which faces quite a different environment with the radiation from the sun and, and also, uh, like I said, being shielded from other, other aspects that aren't the same uh, from the other side. From this mission, I'll be very interested to see if the composition of the soil and the rocks is different and why. Uh, also be very interested to see, you know, what the structure is underneath as well as uh, the plant growth experiment is interesting as well because plants, uh, the reason that they might not work too well in reduced gravity is because they have gravity gravity sensing organs, just like we have a balance system, the roots need to know which way is to grow down into the into the dirt, right? And so if the G level is too low, then they get confused and the roots don't go, you know, where they need to go. So I'm very interested in, in all of those things. How does this all fit into the larger uh, space ambitions that China has with well, its program? China is in this for the long haul. Of course, ever since they started, well, they started sending uh, satellites and unmanned probes out uh, well before Yang Li Wei was launched in 2003. But by launching Yang Li Wei in 2003, they joined the club where only two other countries have been able to launch astronauts into space. And so since that point, they've been doing a very deliberate buildup of their capabilities. Uh, we've seen their uh, spacecraft is very capable. Uh, they've launched two small space labs and operated them uh, with missions up to about a month in space. And starting, I think, in 2020, they're going to begin building their own space station. Uh, I know they're looking for international cooperation with a lot, you know, all the different spacefaring countries. And uh, so I think it's, there's going to be a lot of activity going on. Leroy Chow, always great to have your take. And thank you for joining us here in the studio. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks.